Why are we even talking about data products? Data is increasingly becoming an article of trade or commerce. The era of data is about the process of data commoditization, where data is becoming an independently valuable asset that is freely available on the market. A commodity is defined as something useful that can be turned to commercial or other advantages. Open data is the strong manifestation of this new era. Open data is mostly about sharing and access to data. The government mandates and open data policies from multiple countries and public entities continue to contribute to the process of data commoditization. After the hype around open data, monetization of data has emerged as one of the most discussed topics, which is visible also in academic research. Emerging data economy markets are not fully yet here yet. Instead we are still in the phase of learning to utilize and monetize data, both require data products. When you combine APIs and data, you are offering data as a service. The number of new available web APIs that give public access to data started growing explosively around the beginning of the era of data. APIs have become the plumbing for data economy mostly because data is more and more created by devices and sensors. When you combine APIs and data, you are offering data as a service. Data harmonizing platforms such as Platform of Trust contain productized APIs as well as data source system integration, and thus handles the plumbing for your data value chain. Now let's have a deeper look at what are typical data product variations, types, structure and some examples. One way to see data product types is to divide them into five categories, static, rendered, dynamic, low-code, no-code and functional data products. An example of static data products is a dataset which is the most common sharing format in open data. The datasets are static and are sometimes updated occasionally. Selling datasets has been there also for a long time. An example of a commercial dataset is company contact information. Different kinds of reports and documents go to the same category. Rendered data products offer a dynamic often visualized and formatted views to the data product content. Also, Data products that are compatible with various digital twin solutions and game engines such as Unreal as well as Map Service compatible data products fall into this category. These products often resemble services. Dynamic data products are data streams driven and APIs driven. These can be divided into two subcategories. The first one is request driven data products which expect data product consumer to be active and request content by invoking API calls. The second type of data product is a subscription, in which the data product consumer subscribes to the data product and after that is offered changed information automatically without invoking API calls. Either one of these can have predefined or elastic content. In predefined data, the product owner has locked the content, and in an elastic data product, data consumers can select a subset of the content. Low-code slash no-code platform data products are out-of-the-box compatible with services like Zapier, if this then that and Microsoft Power Apps to mention a few. Functional data products are APIs and algorithms. Examples are algorithms for data mining, matching, cleansing, relevance computation, and lineage tracing. Developers may upload these algorithms to a data marketplace as a black box user-defined function, so other participants of the data marketplace may buy and try out these algorithms. The other subcategory is bidirectional data products which are intended to give control commands or alike to data source systems instead of just getting information for an application. Are all data products public? No, all data products must not be public or available to all. Data products just like APIs can be divided into four categorizes, open data products, public, partner and private slash internal data products. 
This initial taxonomy is of course a moving target due to nascent nature of the data economy. Open data and public data products are the most visible part of the data economy while partner and internal data products take bigger role behind the scenes. Some might see that data flow is the product. That is not a product or commodity. The data flow or payload is the core content of the data product. The content must be wrapped with product information like a candy. A good product has attractive and informative name that sticks in people's heads. The name and information about data product producer are part of the brand and we all know brands influence customer behavior and trust. Brand is everything and productizing your data is about building a brand for your data offering. Products with same kind of content are often compared based on price. Depending of the product and business model, pricing might be for example unit-based or subscription. The list of features or ingredients is another thing for consumers to compare two or more somewhat similar products. Not all products are intended to be available in global markets. We know that content in Netflix differs depending of where you are accessing the service. Likewise, some data products have limitations and conditions. Some data products are available only in given country for example due to legislation. All the features mentioned are part of data product specification, which has been developed with help of the platform of trust customers. Data product spec is the first attempt to define data economy must have data product features in machine readable format. The features of data product enable data markets and competition to emerge. What about practical examples then? What are the real data product implementations? Well, let's have a look. CO2 levels, humidity, temperature measurements are all examples of data products. With help of this data, building owner can optimize air ventilation. If you would also weather forecast as a data product, then the heating can be optimized. This in turn can reduce the CO2 footprint, and maintenance costs of the building. Another example is mobility as a service. Getting tram and bus locations from one source and in one data schema format is a great example of a data product and the value it brings for the developers. Since data is harmonized, the same application works in all cities with less code. The last example is from healthcare in which the exact location of a certain device might not always be known at a hospital when the device is needed in patient care. These devices can be connected to the web, where their data can be transferred into the selected system to see up-to-date information on their locations and whether they are currently being used or not. To summarize it all, data economy requires productized data and access. The added value is in the data which is packaged into easy-to-understand, buy-and-consume data products.